I hope you've all had a good lunch. I hope you all enjoyed your workshop sessions. Um, it was certainly great for me to get around and, and chat to, to people over lunch. And um, one of the people I spoke to actually asked me whether during the morning session I had been playing the barrister's game. Now, um, I'm sure you all know what the barrister's game is. The barrister's game is the game that we barristers play in court when things are a little bit dull, just to liven things up. And what we do is we have a series of bets or side bets that a barrister can't get a certain word or phrase into a question or speech without, of course, the judge noticing. And the most boring cases of all tend to be planning and uh, cases, building cases, because they take forever, six weeks just to introduce the documents. Um, and I remember I was once bet some years ago now that I couldn't get the entire cast of EastEnders, uh, past and present mind, into a question. Not, not that difficult as it happens. Um, I grant, Your Honour, uh, that these defendants had had their fill. Uh, there is not a mark, not a dot, not a trace uh, on these site plans. It may sound uh, pat to say there has been a tiff between the parties, uh, but no, it is far fouler. To be frank, these plans have been butchered. Easy, <laughs> easy. But I want to tell you, shamefully, about the most appalling example of this practice I ever came across. It was a murder trial. It was at the Old Bailey. And one of the cheeky junior barristers in the case bet the senior QC that he couldn't get or smuggle 20 chocolate confectionery sweet names into his plea in mitigation. And the QC took the bet. <laughs> and he began to mitigate in this way. He said, Your Honour, let us not fudge the issue. <laughs> he said, the, the topic under consideration is murder. He said, my client has, by his own admission, killed his wife on the night in question, just after eight. <laughs> I, I shall ignore the snickers of uh, the jury. He said, but Your Honour, he's a good man, not a born villain, not a cad. Bury that thought. Certainly he's no hero. Uh, but as I see him standing there, sanguine, penguin, even, uh, he seems to me, Your Honour, a man caught twix the age-old temptations of money and marriage, uh, the m ms if you will. But what reward did his crime bring him? What bounty? <laughs> he is, Your Honour, a good man from a decent home and a quality street. <laughs> but for him, life was no bed of roses. <laughs> Your Honour, he became a drifter, a flake. But when it came to the crunch, he was only doing what many of us would have done, as your key witness said. <laughs> but as I see him standing in the dock, I say to him, Mr. Gibb, Toby Gibb, Tobe, the only thing you've done wrong <laughs> is to be human. Your Honour, if you believe that his life is worth more than a dime, a lenient sentence will indeed give him the boost that he needs. <laughs> well, it was very... I wasn't playing that game this morning, by the way. Um, <laughs> It was very difficult to get an independent adjudi adjudication on that one, but I think I made about £40 on the day. Now, <laughs> enough of that. Um, let's get into our afternoon session. It's a great pleasure for me to uh, welcome back, to reintroduce reintrodu Paul Phillip, SRA Chief Executive, who is going to throw forward, to look forward uh, to some of the key priorities for the year ahead. So please, welcome Paul again. <laughs> 